Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson on the MRI of the shoulder joint. In this lesson, we will look at the bony structures of the joint, the parts of the rotator cuff, and anatomy on different planes of MRI imaging. Let's get started. The shoulder joint is classified as a ball and socket joint. It is comprised of the humerus, scapula, and clavicle. Important structures of the humerus near the shoulder joint include the humeral head, anatomical neck, surgical neck, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, and intertubercular or bicipital groove. On the scapula, the glenoid cavity attaches to the humeral head. The acromion extends over the shoulder joint to articulate with the clavicle and the coracoid process projects anteriorly. On the posterior aspect, the scapular spine is an important dividing structure for muscles. The clavicle serves to connect the shoulder to the axial skeleton via the acromial clavicular and sternoclavicular joints. While the bony structures are important, they are not the usual focus for MRI imaging. Soft tissues like the rotator cuff and glenoid labrum are a more common focus of studies. The rotator cuff is comprised of four muscles and tendons and allows for the vast range of motion in the shoulder. Structures include the supraspinatus muscle and tendon, infraspinatus muscle and tendon, teres minor muscle and tendon, and subscapularis muscle and tendon. One trick to remember the structures of the rotator cuff is to remember the acronym SITS. The first S is for supraspinatus, I is for infraspinatus, the T is for teres minor. You can remember this is teres minor and not teres major because the T is lowercase. The final S stands for subscapularis. Now let's take a look at the anatomy on some MRI images, starting with the coronal oblique plane. Starting at an anterior slice, important bony structures include the clavicle, located superiorly, and the coracoid process, demonstrated more inferiorly. There are several important muscles seen on this slice. This includes the deltoid on the lateral aspect of the shoulder. Other muscles from superior to inferior include the trapezius, supraspinatus, and subscapularis. A portion of the subscapularis tendon can also be identified as tendons always appear as dark or black structures. Moving posteriorly, the humeral head begins to emerge, as well as the articulation with the glenoid portion of the scapula. Superiorly, the acromion process of the scapula is demonstrated. As the slices approach midline, there are several important structures to note on this slice. First, bony structures visible include the humeral head, acromion, and scapula. Specific parts of the scapula visualized here include the glenoid and suprascapular notch. Muscles demonstrated include the deltoid, trapezius, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major, and latissimus dorsi. Visible tendons include the biceps brachii long head, which inserts into the bicipital groove, and the supraspinatus, seen crossing the superior aspect of the humeral head. The superior and inferior labrum are visible as dark, somewhat triangular-shaped structures at the edge of the joint. The labrum is a ring of fibrous cartilage that surrounds the glenoid and stabilizes the joint. At midline, we have a better view of the supraspinatus tendon. We can also see the greater tuberosity of the humerus in profile. The teardrop shape located inferior to the joint space is the axillary recess. Moving posteriorly, the angle of the acromion is visible on the superior aspect of the shoulder. The infraspinatus tendon can be seen moving from the infraspinatus muscle to insert on the humeral head. This view also demonstrates the teres minor muscle below the infraspinatus muscle. On the last slice, muscles include the teres minor, latissimus dorsi, deltoid, and the triceps brachii. Let's move on to the axial plane of imaging. Starting from a superior position, the acromioclavicular joint is visible. This is made up of the lateral aspect of the clavicle connecting to the acromion. Moving inferiorly, the supraspinatus muscle and tendon are demonstrated well. The large deltoid muscle is demonstrated wrapping around the upper humerus. Important bony structures on this image include the round humeral head, the glenoid, and the coracoid process projecting anteriorly. Important tendons of the rotator cuff are demonstrated here. On the posterior aspect of the joint, the infraspinatus tendon is demonstrated as a dark line. On the anterior aspect of the joint, the subscapularis tendon is demonstrated wrapping on the front of the humerus. It is important to remember the subscapularis muscle is located between the ribcage and the scapula. You can use medical terminology to help you remember. The prefix sub means under. Therefore, you can remember the subscapularis muscle is located underneath the scapula. 
Here we see the lesser tuberosity and greater tuberosity and the bicipital groove. The biceps brachii longhead tendon sits in the bicipital groove. On the axial view, we can see the anterior and posterior labrum as darkened triangular areas. Remember, the labrum is a ring of cartilage in the joint space. Continuing inferiorly, now we can see the teres minor muscle underneath the deltoid muscle. Anteriorly, the subscapularis muscle is seen just in front of the scapula. On the final slice, the scapular body is seen with the subscapularis muscle anterior and the teres minor posterior. Toward the anterior portion of the body, the pectoralis major and minor are visible. Finally, let's take a look at a few sagittal oblique images. Starting laterally, the deltoid muscle is located centrally. Moving medially, the humerus begins to emerge, surrounded by the deltoid muscle. The acromion is demonstrated on the superior aspect of the joint. On this slice, we can see some specific tendons of the rotator cuff. The infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and subscapularis are demonstrated as dark areas surrounding the humeral head. Here, you can see where the acromion and clavicle meet, the acromioclavicular joint. We can begin to see a portion of all the muscles of the rotator cuff here. This includes the subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. The coracoid process is also demonstrated. The clavicle, scapular body, and scapular spine are better demonstrated on this slice. Here we have a full slice through the scapular body, which somewhat looks like a Y. Breaking down the muscle names, you can see how their names are based on their location. The supraspinatus is located superior to the scapular spine. The infraspinatus is located below the scapular spine, and the subscapularis is located underneath the scapula. This has been an overview of shoulder anatomy on an MRI scan. Thanks for watching.